Hello, I'm Luis Nuño. I am a professor in the area of signal theory and communications at the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. Now I'm going to give a summary of the musical abacus. I explain the musical abacus in other presentation, its main characteristics. This is the musical abacus and I finish that presentation with some questions which may arise when one learns music theory, such as why does the major scale have seven notes? Why are there 12 musical notes and so on? In other presentation I explain the main concepts in music theory and now I'm going to answer to these questions. <coughs> to do it I will follow this diagram, first harmonics, then 12 notes, consonant intervals and then on the one hand the major chord, major key and major scale and on the other hand minor chord, minor key and minor scale. This way the theory of harmonics is the starting point of music theory which is the answer to the question which is the utility of the theory of harmonics. As I explained in other presentation, every real note is equivalent to a sum of infinite harmonics. The first of them is called fundamental and determines the pitch of the note. The rest of harmonics determine the timbre. Harmonic 2 shows maximum affinity with harmonic 1 to the extent that in music we assign the same name to those two notes. That means that on a chromatic circle they are placed on the same point. As we can see here, harmonics 1, 2, it's double 4, it's double 8 and so on. Now we can represent the first 10 harmonics on the chromatic circle. After harmonics 1 and 2, the most important one is harmonic 3. If we want to divide the, the chromatic circle in such a way that one of the divisions coincides with harmonic 3, we obtain 12 divisions, that is 12 notes. This note is very close to harmonic 3, so the, the interval from harmonic 3 to harmonics 1 and 2 are called perfect. So we have the answers to why are there 12 musical notes and why intervals from C to F, from C to G and from C to its octave C are called perfect. After harmonics 1 and 3, the most important one is harmonic 5. In this case, this note is not exactly at the same place of that harmonic. So the intervals from this note to harmonics 1, 2 and 3 are not perfect, but they are still consonant because we are used to, to hear the first harmonics of every sound. A consonant interval is a combination of two notes that, when played together, produces a sensation of harmony, rest and stability. They are composed by any two of the first harmonics, 1, 3, 5, of any given note. For example, C, G, E. As well, a consonant chord is a combination of three notes that, when played together, produces a sensation of harmony, rest and stability. There are only two kinds of consonant chords, major and minor. The major chord is composed by the first harmonics, 5, 1, 3, 5, of any given note. For example, C, E, G. So we have the answers to why certain kinds of intervals are consonant and why certain kinds of chords are consonant. If we start with note C and we look for other notes closely related to it, we can start with its first harmonics, then we take note G with its first harmonics, and a note, a note F whose third harmonic is C, we take its first harmonics and now we have the notes of C major key. If we sort these notes by their pitch, we obtain the C major scale. Here we can say that sometimes the distance between two consecutive notes is two divisions and sometimes is one division, which leads to the concepts of whole step and half step respectively. If we start with note C and play the scale until the next C, this last note is the eighth note in this series then the concept of octave, which is a Latin word for eighth. Now we obtain seven notes for the major scale and we also obtain the particular sequence of whole and half steps in a major scale. Now we can also verify that chords are actually built by superimposition of thirds. As we can see here, from C to E is a third and from E to G is another third. As well, we can verify that the main chords in any key are on the first, fourth and fifth degrees. In our case, those chords were C, 
F and G. When two nodes are two divisions apart, we can include another node in between them, which is an alter node. The distinction between natural and alter nodes is very clear in the piano, where natural nodes correspond to white keys and alter nodes to black keys. How is all this information organized on the musical abacus? If we start with note C and its harmonics, we can group together the notes with the same name and then we copy that information on the abacus. If we start with note C and look for other notes related to it, we keep the first third harmonics, then note G with its first harmonics and note F with its harmonics, so we obtain the three main chords in C major. In G chord we included the note F which corresponds to the seventh harmonic which also belongs to this key. In the case of C major and F major chords, their seventh harmonic don't belong to this key. This G chord is also composed by superimposition of thirds, as we can see here, from G to B, B to D, D to F, and even the next harmonic, which is A. If we saw these notes by their pitch, we obtain the C major scale, where all the intervals between the tonic and the rest of the notes are perfect or major. A minor chord is obtained in an artificial way. It only contains consonant intervals as well as the major chord, but this time by inverting the third intervals. First the minor third and then the major third. This way we obtain the C minor chord. If we want to avoid the, these flats, we can start with note A, and we form the A minor chord. Other notes closely related to A may be obtained by taking note E, which is a perfect fifth above A, and the E minor chord. As well, we form a minor chord, a perfect fifth below A, which is D minor, and these are the notes of A minor. If we saw these notes by their pitch, we obtain the A natural minor scale. So we obtain seven notes for a minor scale, and the C major and A minor are called relative keys because they contain exactly the same notes, and the only difference is the tonic. I explained in other uh, presentation the harmonic and melodic minor scale. The harmonic minor scale is the most used and its chord on the fifth degree is major where we can include the seventh harmonic, in this case D, as we can see here. So we obtain the three main chords in A minor for the harmonic minor scale and if we saw the notes by their pitch we obtain the A minor scale which may be natural, harmonic or melodic. The key signature in C major A minor has no accidentals and in this case we can see the order of sharps and flats in the central area of the abacus. If we just start with a different note, for example D, we will obtain D major and its relative B minor. We start with note D with its harmonics, then we obtain the three main chords in B major and by sorting the notes by the pitch we obtain the D major scale. In the case of the relative B minor, we cannot start with harmonics because the minor chord is made in an artificial way. So we have to first obtain the three main chords and then by sorting the notes by their pitch, we obtain the B minor scale, which may be natural, harmonic or melodic. The key signature of D major B minor contains two sharps, which are F and C, and as you can see in this area of the abacus. As conclusions, the theory of harmonics is the starting point of music theory. Western music is based on three basic principles, which are first, the concept of octave and its division into 12 parts, this, that means the use of 12 mus musical notes. Second, the concept of consonance for combinations of two and three notes, that is consonant intervals and consonant chords. And third, the concept of major scale or major key, which is a set of seven notes showing great affinity among them. The musical abacus integrates the main concepts in music theory, relating them in a logical and ordered way. 
These concepts are basic in any musical style such as classical music, modern music, jazz, Latin music, etc. In order to use it, you need not know how to read music. The musical abacus has been presented in several conservatories and musical societies, and in fact, it is currently used in some music schools. You can find all the information on the webpage harmonicquill.com. Thank you very much for your attention.